Greetings guys, this is Stokecraft. Before I say anything, I'd like to thank you so much for the 253 subscribers because we have reached it. And that means one thing, the subscriber special videos are getting released. Still, if you have no idea why I am releasing my subscriber special videos at 253 subscribers or you don't even know why I am doing a subscriber special at all, you should go watch the subscriber special announcement video on my channel. You can click your screen right now. So as I said during the subscriber special announcement video, this video is going to be about the computer build that I did during Christmas. So what am I going to cover this video? First of all, after this quick introduction, I'm going to tell you about why I even started thinking about making a new computer. After that, we're going to take a look at what components I put in my computer and I'm going to give you an explanation about why I have chosen those particular components. After we know all the components that are going to my computer, we are going to see how I built the computer in the first place. And we're going to end this video with some personal advice that I can give you if you're planning on building a new rig yourself. Before starting this video, I do have to point out that I am not an expert uh, on building computers. So if there's anyone watching that has a lot more knowledge about computers than me, and I, there's almost no doubt that there will be, Please take everything with a grain of salt because I am not an expert on this subject. I'm just going to share with you my personal experiences and my personal opinion. That's all for the introduction. So I had to say let's get right into this. The idea of getting and building a new computer all started uh, around autumn of last year. The autumn holidays were coming up and I thought that that was the perfect time to build a new computer. But the holidays were only a week long and I decided not to do it because I just didn't think that I had enough time to finish the build before st school would start again. And the reason for me deciding to build a new computer was to um, improve my quality and things on YouTube and playing my games. Because before I was using this uh, PC, I got a computer that my father owned and the PC was already 6 years old. But the reason that my computer at that point was doing that well is because it had uh, one of the best processors of its time. It had the AMD Phenom, I think it was called, and it was the first 6 core processor on the market 6 years ago. So that's why the computer still performed very well even after 6 years of continual use of that same PC. But as all computers do, they get old and the components just get overmatched by new components that get onto the market. So my computer still was good enough to play World of Tanks at a reasonable frame rate at high graphic settings. And it was just capable of still keep making videos for you guys on YouTube. But the thing that the PC just couldn't do was live stream because when I tried to play World of Tanks and stream it at the same time, my maximum frame rate uh, would be around 17 FPS. I have streamed with the old PC, but as I was getting better at World of Tanks, I found it more annoying playing with a lower frame rate. So that's why I decided to not stream anymore until I got a new computer. So that's why you saw me beginning to stream a lot more when I got the new computer. And I also thought that my video quality was getting worse because the renderings on the old PC just were getting worse and worse. There was a lot of pixelation and a lot of weird glitches in the videos. And sometimes it would just render some things black screened. So I decided to build a new computer. But where do you start even thinking about making a new computer? And if you want to build it yourself especially because that is going to be harder than you think it is. You start by choosing the right components. So let's now switch to the components. Before I tell you anything about uh, how I built the computer, I do have to give a very big shout out to my dad because my dad helped me out so much during this build. He knows pretty much everything about computers that I would ever need to know. So if I had any questions or anything that was yeah that I didn't understand, I could of course ask him. And a lot of the right components that I chose for my computer build are chosen because of him and his advice. So again, big shout out to my dad. Okay, so the first thing, how do you even start choosing the right components or even getting started trying to think about a new computer build? Well, the two things that you have to uh, think about is the total budget that you have and what your goal is with the computer. Because a lot of the components that you choose depends on the goal that you have with your computer. If you're going to do something with video editing or video creation like me, it is very logical that you will need some more powerful components in your PC. 
But if you're just going to play some games, you don't need such a powerful PC as I do. So what are the components that I have chosen? I think that the most of you will have seen my video because during Christmas I released a video, What's in the Box? And in that video I covered all the components that I have ordered myself online and those are going to be the head components for in my new computer build. So if you haven't seen that video, click your screen right now and check the video out if you want to. First of all, what components do you need in your PC? Components you are going to put in your PC are, first of all, the processor, the most important component of the whole PC. Why do you need to consider the processor as the most important component? It is considered as the brain of the computer. The processor is going to calculate uh, the most important things in the PC, so that's why it's considered the brain of the PC. Next up, you're going to need some RAM memory, and how I uh, explained RAM memory to myself is this is the, the, the storage that the PC needs to calculate on. So it uses this amount of storage to perform its calculations. Next up, because the processor is going to calculate so much, it is of course going to heat up, and you will need to cool it down. The component that does that for you is the CPU cooler. By the way, I always used to get confused about what CPU and what GPU means. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit, in other words, the processor. And GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit, in other words, the graphics card. So next up you need the component that is going to buy to combine everything together, and the component you will need is the motherboard. Next up, you're going to have to power up everything in your computer, and that is done by the power supply. And last but not least, you're going to need some storage. There is two kinds of storage that we know. SSDs, solid state drives, and HDDs, which stands for hard disk drive. So what are the differences between these two? To understand the differences, we have to know how these two storages work. So first of all, the HDDs have been around for the longest of times. The HDDs are built up out of a disc that turns, with a rapid speed. And of all this disc, all the information of yours is stored. So when you try to open a program, so the information that the computer needs to start the program is stored somewhere on that disc. So you don't know in advance where on the disc that piece of information is stored, so the disc has to turn around in order for the head to try and read the, the, the correct information and to find it. So in other words, it's going to take time to find information. And that's why compared to SSDs, HDDs are much slower. Because SSDs don't have that problem. SSDs are made out of chips on which your information is stored. So in that way the computer doesn't have to search for the information in the first place. It can just directly get it off one of those chips. A disadvantage of SSDs is that they are much more expensive than HDDs. More advantages of SDDs over HDDs is that they don't make any noise or vibrations and they are much more energy efficient. Because of course SSDs don't, ha don't have to power that giant disc turning around. These were the most important components of the computer. Other things you could include is a DVD drive for instance. So as I said, when you are going to start choosing your components for your computer, the things you need to know is your budget and your goal with the computer. So as I had saved up around 3 years of all the money that I had earned, I had a thousand euros plus to spend. My goal with the new PC is going to be play games at the maximum, because that would enable me to make higher quality YouTube videos, and of course it would enable me to start live streaming again. Also the computer needed to be very powerful so that I would have no problems whatsoever when I was making videos. When I decided to build the new computer I had one demand and that demand would be that the PC would be future proof. What do I mean by future proof? It basically means that the PC also needs to be compatible after five years. So after five years this PC would hopefully still be considered as one of the best. Talking about it I actually had two demands. The second demand is that the computer needs to be expandable. With expandable I mean that I can put new components in there if new come out. And that I can upgrade certain components like RAM memory. Okay guys, that is far enough theoretical talk. We are now going to discuss what components I have chosen and why. But before I do that, I have to point out that I got a few components from my dad. 
So first of all, for storage, I really wanted to buy an SSD. As they are too expensive, I probably couldn't afford it. But my dad has a lot of SSDs and he was nice enough to let me borrow one of his 1 terabyte SSDs. And for the people that don't know, 1 terabyte means 1000 gigabytes. So I had already 1 terabyte SSD. Next up for the graphics card, I was thinking about buying a 970 or a 980. But my father and I were really looking into the 980 Ti, one of the most powerful graphics cards of its time back then. And my father was very lucky because he saw a second-hand 980 Ti on the website. The graphics card had only run for two weeks, so it was practically new. And he could buy it for a lot less than for a new 980 Ti. So the thing is, he immediately bought it. And again, he was that nice that he said to me, Thomas, you can use it. But if you are buying a graphics card yourself, you don't, of course, have to buy a 980 Ti. Because that card is just overkill for it almost every single one of you the thing i would suggest is buying a 970 or a 980 because those cards are probably a lot less expensive and they are very good cards still also i retrieved a lot of components from my previous build because when i stripped down the old pc i of course had the case and the dvd drive retrieved from my old computer so as you can hear i had a lot of components already the only components that I really needed to buy were the processor, the motherboard, the RAM and the CPU cooler. So first of all I'm now going to show you what processor I have chosen and why. So guys to show you what computer components I bought I'm going to use a website called tweakers.net. It is a Dutch site. I have no idea if you can change the, the language of the site but it doesn't really matter. So first of all... When I thought about buying a processor for my PC, I thought I would look into the Xeon line by Intel. I really wanted to get an Intel processor because, yeah, it is just a little bit more reliable than AMD. But of course, AMD has a lot of good processors too. But for now, I decided I wanted to buy an Intel. So I looked into the Xeon line. But the thing was, the processors at where, yeah, when they really started to get a little bit good, the Xeon, yeah, the price was just a little bit too much. And what do you need into con uh, to yeah to get into consideration uh, to buy a processor? The most important things for me were cache and the wattage, the thermal design power. The thermal design power needs to be as high as possible, at least over 100. Why? Because that means that the processor needs a lot of power and calculates a lot. And the processor is not not is not going to lose any calculating capabilities because it is economically uh, using less power. So it is important to have a very high wattage. Of course, uh, don't choose a high wattage if you care about a very high power check at the end of the month. So take that into consideration as well. But for me, it didn't really matter. Um, so next up, the cache. It needs to be as high as possible as well. <laughs> oh god, sorry. Doesn't matter. Okay, next thing the uh, the clock frequency uh, I didn't really take this into consideration that much you could uh, take this into consideration if it's important to you but the cache and the thermal design power are the most important things for me but as the Xeons were getting a little bit too expensive I went back to the i7 line which is of course a very powerful processor line as well and the yeah, and Intel had just released their Skylake, the processor, the i7-6700K. And I looked into this processor, and you can see a very high clock frequency. Uh, it has got yeah, not enough wattage for I would have wanted. And the cache is also a little bit disappointing. So that's why I decided to not buy the Skylake processor. Also, the thing is that really important about the processor is the socket. The, yeah, the socket is pretty much the thing that uh, on which it's going to fit onto the motherboard. And there are a lot of different sockets. This 1151 socket is pretty old. So if I had chosen this processor, my computer wouldn't have been future-proof. Because if I would have later on wanted to change out the processor, it's very uh, likely that this socket will be gone in the future. So that's why I didn't choose the Skylake processor. So after searching further in the i7 line, I came across this processor, the i7-5930K. 
It is still pretty expensive, but it's got pretty much everything that I wanted. It has got a very good clock frequency. It has got six cores, which is really good. It has got one of the newest sockets uh, on the market, which is really good. Also, uh, it has a very high thermal design power, which is exactly what I want. And this processor has got a lot of cash. So that's why I decided to choose and buy the i7-5930K. So what CPU cooler did I choose to match the i7-5930K? I chose to use the Noctua NH-T15. It is one of the best CPU coolers on the market. It has got two cooling fins with two fans attached to them. And what is really special about these fans is that they are extremely silent. The disadvantage of this very big CPU cooler is that um, you can only mount this in a case where you know you have enough space because I know that I've got a very big case and I know that this would have fitted into my uh, case so that's why I decided to choose this one. You can always also choose to use a water cooled CPU but the efficiency of water cool of your yeah, CPU water coolers is not that good nowadays so I decided to buy an air cooler um, of course, the improvements of water cooling is just getting better and better every day. But still, for now, I decided to choose uh, to choose a air cooling CPU cooler. Next up for the RAM, I really, yeah, tried to find something that was 32 gigabytes. I really wanted to have 32 gigabytes as my minimum, and also I wanted to have the quickest RAM as possible. This is not the exact RAM that I have chosen. But it comes pretty close. The RAM that I have chosen has a 3.2 gigahertz um, memory speed, and it is of course 32 gigabytes in total. And I have chosen to get four pieces, four pieces of 8 gigabytes. Why? Because if you divide the amount of calculations of the computer over the amount of RAM you have, it is going to be much more efficient. So. Yeah, at least that's what my dad told me. So it's better to have four pieces of eight gig of eight gigs than two pieces of sixteen gigs. That was his advice. So that's why I uh, chose to do this. Also, this is a very high speed, and you should only choose this uh, high amount of memory speed if you know that the me if the motherboard you're going to choose can of course handle that amount of memory speed. So that's why we're going to take a look at the motherboard right now. So the motherboard that I have chosen is the MSI X99A SLI Plus. So the thing is, what do you need to take into consideration? The most important thing is, is that the socket that is mounted on this motherboard, you can see that right here, that's the thing in the middle, uh, can be used to mount the processor that you have used. And if you remember the 5930K, that had a slot, as we get a socket, the 2011 3 and this motherboard also has a socket of 2011-3. So that's the most important thing. So the CPU and the motherboard match already. Then we've got the the form factor of the, uh, uh, the motherboard. That basically is the size of it. 80x is the standard form. I yeah, first tried uh, to find a 80x plus format. But that just got too expensive. So I decided to not uh, buy an ATX plus uh, form factor. So next I um, took into consideration how many slots of RAM this motherboard have. As you can see this has got 8. And why did I choose 8? Um, I chose RAM that had 4 pieces of 8 gigabytes. So 4 of the 8 slots in this motherboard will be used. But as I said, I want my computer to be expandable in the future. So if I would want to put another 32 gigabytes of RAM in, I could because I've got four slots remaining. So that's why I chose to um, have eight RAM slots on my motherboard with a maximum of 128 gigabytes that it can handle. Also, this motherboard supports the very quick memory time of the RAM that I had chosen because it doesn't say anything anymore on the website but when I was choosing my motherboard it said that it supported the 3200 gigahertz fre uh, frequency that 
the RAM had. So this was the perfect motherboard that I could probably have bought. Also what is really important on the motherboard is all the connectors that you have. Um, this motherboard doesn't have that many. But I decided that this is going to be enough because I probably would not need that much at all. Now that we've chosen all the components, we are going to start the actual build. One thing that I would advise you to do is build the entire PC out of its case first. Why? If one of your components doesn't work, you don't have to go through the whole process of, of taking your computer apart again. So first build the PC out outside of its case. When you have finished your build and you have installed your operating system, you can start to put anything into the case. So that is what I'm going to do right now as well. The first thing we're going to do after we unpack the motherboard is install the CPU. When unpacking the motherboard, it is very important that you touch as less electronics as you can to avoid damage. To install the processor, the first thing we need to get out is the socket protector. Then we can unpack the processor itself. When you pick up the processor, it's very important to pick it up at the side and not touch any of the electronics on the other side of the processor. It is very important to leave every piece of electronic untouched. Also make sure you know what way you need to insert the processor into the socket. And if you don't know for sure, check all the instructions that come with the processor and the motherboard. On there you'll find everything you need to know on how to install all your components safely. After you have installed your processor, it is time to insert the RAM. In the book that comes with the RAM, they advise you on how to insert the RAM into your motherboard and that is what I was searching for. Make sure you know for sure in what slots your RAM sticks need to go. Then flick back the clips on the motherboard to insert the RAM stick. When you put in the RAM stick, it is very important that you hear a click. The click indicates that the RAM stick falls right into place and that is attached to the motherboard. After you've installed all the RAM, it is of course time to put on the CPU cooler. But first, we need to unpack it of course. Make sure you read the instructions carefully, so that you know how to install the CPU cooler onto your motherboard. Now that the base of the CPU cooler is installed, we can start to unpack the CPU cooler itself and start to install it. The next thing we are going to do is put on some thermal compound onto the processor. Thermal compound is a compound that you put between the processor and your CPU cooler that helps to guide the heat from the processor into the CPU cooler to cool it down. It is very important that this layer is not too thick because otherwise it will isolate the processor from the CPU cooler so that the heat can't go from the processor towards the CPU cooler. In that way your processor will get very hot and eventually burn. So make sure you do this step with a lot of care. Some advice I can give you on the thermal compound, also try to spread it over the whole surface of the CPU heatsink. And don't just put a little drop in the middle of it. 
If you cover the whole surface of the processor, you will have more surface from which you can guide the heat from the processor towards the CPU cooler and in that way it will cool more efficiently. When you put some thermal compound, get a piece of cardboard or paper and spread it to make it more even. After that is done, it is time to put on the CPU cooler block. Again, I will highlight that it is very important to read the instructions, because can you see what I did wrong here? Yes, indeed. I put on my CPU cooler in the wrong direction. I have to turn it 90 degrees. But it doesn't really matter, as that is a really easy fix. So that's all the basic components installed. The next thing we need to do is install the graphics card and the storage, and then connect the power supply to every port on the motherboard, the graphics card. And then we can of course fire up the system if we connect it to a screen. And if all done well, your PC will post and that means that it works. After this is done, it is of course time to install your operating system. And if that's all done and your PC is ready and all the programs that you need are installed, it is of course time to build the PC and put it in to its case. The thing is, is that my old PC was still inside the case, so I first had to get the old PC out of there. That's exactly what I did. After I stripped out all the components of the old PC, it was time to clean the case. Cleaning the case was very easy, but now comes the hardest part, putting everything back in. So I started with the whole motherboard and the whole installation on there, I just put it in. And after that I put the graphics card into its position slot into the motherboard. Look at just how gigantic this graphics card is. The thing that was by far the most frustrating for me was to install the power supply and power up everything. Because I had spent all my money already on all the components, I didn't have enough money to buy a new power supply with longer cables. But when your problem only is the length of the cables, I don't know if it, if it is really worth buying a whole new power supply. So that meant that I had to put in a power supply in a pretty ugly way. Here we can see the finished result. Everything is in there, the HDD, the SDD, the graphics card, the processor, the CPU cooler, everything. Because the cables of the power supply weren't long enough, my cable management is terrible. But I didn't really have a choice. But it doesn't really matter anyway, as the PC works very, very well. So that's pretty much it for the building part guys, I hope you enjoyed to see this. And now for the last advice, do you need a PC like this? 
absolutely not this PC has got one of the most expensive components that you can buy on the market uh, nowadays and also I think that most of you will not be making videos like I do if you're building a PC I would recommend the Skylake processor with a 980 or a GTX 970 or something like that a PC like that is perfect to game with so guys that's pretty much everything I hope you like this video Please leave a like as I did put a lot of time into this video. I put over 6 hours of continuous editing into this video. So support in the comment section down below and the like would be very much appreciated. I know this video is extremely long but I think that this is pretty much everything that I could have told you. In my opinion there is almost nothing I can add into this video. So again I hope you like this video. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.